I'm going to show you how to make a Game of Thrones Season 8 style background for your Vivaria. And the best bit, it's not going to cost you a penny. So with the Game of Thrones Season 8 release just around the corner, I figured I would dedicate this Vivaria, this background build, this full bioactive enclosure to Game of Thrones Season 8. So we're going to do this series in three different episodes. The first one, we're going to build an entire background and it's not going to cost you a penny. The second one, we're going to run through the substrate, the plants, all that sort of stuff. And the fourth, the third one is going to be all about rehousing the animal that's going in here. Now, this is the enclosure we're going to use. A lovely little cube that came from crestyjungle.co.uk. I met them up at Doncaster Reptile Show. So the animal that's going to go inside this enclosure is a lovely arboreal tarantula. A P. regalis is going to be going in here. Now we've been wanting a arboreal tarantula for a long, long time. Done loads of research. A P. regalis is the one that we've gone for, and we're going to make his enclosure look amazing. It's going to be Game of Thrones season eight themed, I suppose you could say. The whole background is this episode. The style we're going for on this one is the Ice Kingdom. The full background is going to be all to do with the Ice Kingdom. Plus, a P. regalis will look absolutely amazing up against that light, icy looking background. So the way we're going to do this, there's no heat, so we don't need to protect it from the heat. But we need to protect it from moisture because it can get quite humid for this species. We found a lovely piece of polystyrene in a um, karaoke machine box. And this is the perfect size. We've had to trim the edges down a little bit just to get it to fit perfect. And then all we've got to do now is shape it. As we're outside now, we're going to need some tools. We've got knives, anything with different radiuses. And we've got a radius there and radius there. A couple of other different knives, different radius sort of area there. And that's all to scoop out and to basically torment the life out of this. So let's get going. <laughs> And all you want to do, guys, is literally look. It's gonna go, it's gonna go that way up. So just make some grooves and stuff. All this dead sharp sort of flat surface, you don't want that. So just, just rough it up. Make sure you do this outside, guys. This is messy as hell. Now I was thinking about leaving that overhang and stuff. Ah, oh, I got a piece of my eye. Wear goggles. I was thinking of leaving that overhang, but I'm not too sure now. I'm thinking of cutting this side out and then using all of this piece for like icicles and stuff down the side. I think that's what I'm going to do. So this is going to be sat in my reptile room um, on top of my super pastel yellow bellies enclosure at the back wall. So I want to cut out this side so that I can be able, when I walk through the room, I'll be able to see straight in and I'll be able to see everything possible. So this is it. We literally just don't cut towards your face, guys. I'm a knob. Now don't try and just stab the knife in because it'll just break up and flake up everywhere. So sort of slide it in like you would if you were like cutting up meat or something. Oh great, now I'm all thinking about Sunday dinner. Oh I'm so hungry now. Sunday dinner, Sunday dinner, Sunday dinner. And let's carry on. Now we're going to use this bit for icicles and stuff. And now we're left with that. So then we've got our spoon and we've gone through all the rough edges and just just constantly keep toying away, getting rid of the smooth areas, making it just look a bit rugged. Check it out. That's what we're left with so far. Now, on camera, I can see a lip here. So I'm going to... There we go. There's a lip there. Make sure you support it on the back so you don't ruin it. Wear protective gear. There we go. Oh, there's a bit there. That's what I'm left with so far. So, you can hide up in this corner. And it's got the rocky effect to it. Let's carry on. That's on its final stage now. I'll go back to that piece, that piece in a moment. I'm going to run over to this piece, the piece we cut off. And I'm going to make some icicles. It's the first time I've done this, so I don't know. But look at that one so far. So, what I'm tempted to do is simply... Now, I don't want these icicles to take up too much room. So, to start with, that's a bit thick. So, I'm going to sort of slice it down into a point, just straight down like that, without cutting my fingers off, hopefully. And I nearly did then. And there we go. Oh, there we go. So, that's made two. So, that can stick 
No, because it's smooth on that side. I can stick that to the back wall, smooth the top off, it can stick to the top, and that is a cracking little icicle. Look at that little dip there and everything. And I've got a bit of smooth area there, so I'm just going to get the blade and gently rub it along there. Just to rough it up, make it a nice bit smoother while always watching your fingers. Now this does look like a bit of hard work, but believe me, it's well worth it when it's finished. There are a few different ways you can make the different backgrounds. This is my pre preferred way, shall we say. And uh, it's always looked nice. You've seen um, Diego's Vivarium, my bearded dragon, that I made that all myself. And uh, I'm gonna make a little notch just in there. Nope, and I'm gonna trim it just there. And look guys, that's gonna stick on a back wall or is it? I don't know, I'll figure something else for that. We still need a name for this um, P. regalis. If you've got any ideas, stick it in the comment section below. While you're there, hit that thumbs up button. I'm thinking now, a name, something to do with Games of Thrones, a really big bad villain or something like that, stick it in the comment section below. So I'm left with this ball at the bottom here. I'm gonna chop that off about probably there. And that one's gone. And I'm gonna make some sort of a boulder or something out of that to stick to the side wall possibly that way and um, let's see how that one goes again just carve it away this guys is what I was left with how amazing is that I'm gonna put it up this way I think because it's thinner at the bottom so it looks like an icicle coming down like a bit of a rock facey sort of thing it'll go flat against the wall just like that and how amazing does that look but this icicle it's got two different corners on it uh, this one has and uh, so that can go in a corner and that'll look amazing but once they're all um, carved I get a lighter just like this and I just gently run it over a various area sometimes it does catch light a little bit so keep hold of it really quick blow it if it does catch fire so because you, you don't want it to catch fire you don't want to burn a hole for it you have to be really quick and stealthy with this lighter and then it takes off the bubbly areas and just sorts of leaves a rough clean surface there you go i've shaped it again just like that in that corner because i didn't want the sharp corner there and um, it just looked out of place so to speak but anyway, it clean, cleans it all up, makes it a bit rougher, a good surface area to paint. And I was just chuffed, it's a little trick I found ages ago, so there you go. Caught fire then, I just blew it out. Got to be really quick and on the ball with it, but I wanted to really get rid of that corner. Uh, just to make it look a bit more natural, so to speak. But it looks great. How amazing is that looking now? I'm, in, I'm loving it so far. I've, I've run the lighter over the entire thing. I saw this little ball down in the corner, that was on the original polystyrene. So I left it to burn for a second blew it out again just I'm going to take away that man-made look to that bottom corner even though that bottom corner is going to be covered by substrate anyway I still wanted to take it out but this is looking great now if you wanted to get like a flat shiny surface you could just heat up the side of a knife and just glide that down the side that'll um, do exactly the same thing but they are, I love this way you can be really sort of arty with it getting some real weird corners and there you go it looks great I've got all the bits ready now that's what it looks like inside the enclosure. I'll put it in there just to see if it fitted and um, see if I needed to carve any edges off or anything. But it's gonna look great once this is all painted up. I'm so, so happy with how this is turning out. So guys, we're in the kitchen. She's watching her soaps. I don't want that background noise over the top of this. We've got some paint. We've got the background. We're gonna start painting. A um, few things you do need to know first. Get her permission. You don't wanna get paint on the carpet. One reason why I'm in the kitchen again. Now the paint you're gonna use is only acrylic paint. There you go. Only use acrylic paint. Um, pastel paint, face paint, anything else just washes off. It's got a load of toxins in it and stuff like that. So you need acrylic paint. Get yourself a ton of brushes. I've got loads of different styles. I'm quite arty, so I love doing all this sort of stuff. So I've always got these to hand. It's a good thing I like doing t-shirt painting with my lad because all this acrylic paint was all in his tub, so it didn't cost me a penny. He's not here tonight, so I've robbed it out of his box. So simply the colours I'm using is white, blue, silver and black. That's it. The white and the black together make a lovely little tiny light grey for some shadowy areas. The blue and the white mixed together will make a really light blue for some sort of haze. And the silver just for a bit of class. So you start off with a base colour. This is all going to be done with layers. So we're going to start off with a base of white, because let's face it, it's an ice kingdom. And we want to go extra firm. I'm using a big brush loads of white paint and it just sort of blocks in a few of the gappy areas and just helps out and then it gives you a good base coat i go mainly over all the darker areas where i've burnt and stuff like that um 
just to hide it but join me back in a little bit and um, we'll see how it goes so with any naturalistic sort of looking paint job that you want to do you have to decide which way the light's coming from so you can decide where the shadows are going to be as you can tell there's a natural shadow there that's coming from where the light is now i want the light to come from this side down to here so then i have to work out where oh, oh no actually i want it come from this side down um so i'm gonna have shadows underneath all these ridges underneath these little bumps maybe a little bit of a shadow underneath here but light up here shadows under this sort of area and then um, the way we do that is to different shades of light gray this is ice we don't want black black will not be a shadow for ice it'll be light gray because it's ice is transparent to some extent isn't it so we're going to add some light gray and some really really light blues as well and uh, that'll bring out really bring out the shadows let's go and there we go i've finished doing a bit of painting i'm going to see what it looks like in the morning but that's virtually it done see the darker stuff the darker grays the lighter grays that's a good tip actually loads of different shades of gray really does work well and it goes where all the shadows should be we've got white as a natural color we've got a really light blue as where the sunlight is hitting it the most and that's absolutely gorgeous coming together great it's a shame this lighting doesn't show it off very well but what do you guys think so far i've still got the icicles to do but that is it that's the background done i'll put it in as soon as it's dried there we go then guys it's all sorted it's all been painted you can see all the different shadows and the light hitting it on various places it's absolutely amazing that's what's next now I, I like to seal it simply because it keeps everything in place where you've done it i've got to let it dry for a bit you can use mod podge to seal it or you can mix like pva glue with um water and water it down a bit and do a couple of coats of that i use mod podge simply because on this project it's going to give it the really deep sort of shiner feel shiny feel shiny look sorry and then um, that's what I want for an icy background, isn't it? My ice kingdom is finally coming together. Guys, the Mod Podge is all on. It's all set nicely. I've left it for over 24 hours. How awesome is that? It's still quite tacky. So I'm not going to bother touching it or putting it, putting it into the enclosure just yet. But that is my Game of Thrones Season 8 DIY background and it's cost absolutely nothing. Uh, there it is, guys. Nice and complete. Still got a few little bits there to add into it but I've got one little icicle just up there and uh, I've got the whole background done and dusted so if you've enjoyed this video stay tuned the next video is going to be to do with the substrate the cleanup crew all the bits that make it bioactive if you've enjoyed it hit that thumbs up button thanks for tuning in